Hey everybody, sorry I couldn't be in class today. Um, I wanted to send over my video virtually and my presentation so that you guys um, still could have a discussion on my topic and I was able to give you guys the information that you needed in order to facilitate that. Um, Dr. Roach is actually going to put up a discussion board, I'm sure she's already told you guys this, where if you have any questions, um, you can write in that and then hopefully I'm able to answer them. Um, unfortunately, I am on the road and I am playing right now, so um, being there is pretty difficult, so wish me luck. Um, I'm going to go over the brochure first and then um, get into a little bit of the presentation. So, like I said before, I wanted to do relationships and disabilities, I'm doing both physical and mental because I think both are too important to just focus on one. Um, so I'm just going to give you really, really brief, short information on each one of those. Um, I could go on for days and write papers and papers on each individual category, but we'll just go over the basics for now. So I'm going to talk about kind of the adversity, perceptions, expectations, and hopes of those with disabilities within relationships. Uh, you'll see on the back there's a kind of a resources page, which I thought was great, um, of books and journal articles, videos, and trainings for not only us as counselors, but parents, um, the individuals that are going through this, just um, overall information on this topic itself. And I actually have a PDF form that has tons, tons, tons more resources. So if anybody is really interested in this and looking for more opportunities to do a little bit more research, let me know and I can shoot that PDF over to you guys. And then you'll see um, accounts of disabled individuals dealing with relationship adversity. These are actually two people uh, that you're gonna see later on in my presentation from a show which is actually called The Undateables, which is on the other side of the brochure. Um, so The Undateables is a British television show that started in 2005, and what it does, or what it is rather, is um, it's a, it's, I would, don't wanna say like a reality TV show, but um, it takes individuals with learning disabilities and it introduces a Stars in the Sky program, which is a dating agency, and what Stars in the Sky do is they take a chaperone and they take these um, individuals with disabilities on dates. And they make sure, um, so they get them set up with their date and then they make sure that they're safe. They bring them there, um, make sure they meet up with the right person. And then even if there's lulls in the conversation, like this chaperone is there to help them kind of facilitate a relationship um, because it's what they're looking for. And you'll see that later in the video. Uh, Stars in the Sky is actually a great organization. It's a small charity um, and they've organized over 180 dates for individuals with disabilities and they're responsible for one marriage, one same-sex ceremony, um, and three engagements and 15 long-term relationships. So as you can see, like people with disabilities really do want, um, want these loving relationships and want the same thing as we do. And it's hard because they're, because of their disability, they're treated differently and not only by doctors and counselors and friends and society, but they're seen for their disability and not for their wants and desires and hopes and everything that they want, just as a normal couple would want or a normal individual would want. So on the back here, I've gone over just like a couple of real quick snippets. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting was in a 2008 poll of The Observer, they found that 70% of those that were surveyed um, would not have sex with a disabled person. But that being said, opinions are starting to change in that area. So not necessarily that those without disabilities are wanting to have sex with those that do have disabilities, but our perceptions of them having relationships are changing and it's starting with a younger, more liberal generation. and they're becoming more aware that those with disabilities have the right to live these normal and ordinary lives and experience the same pleasures that um, individuals who don't have disabilities do. And you'll see to the right of that, there's been a couple studies um, that have shown that romantic relationships and sexuality are actually considered good for those with disabilities and these individuals have expressed that they want that, they want that relationship, they want they want to be in love, they want to get married, they want to have kids, um, they have the normal desires of, you know, a normal, uh, standard normal couple, and they just want to be treated like that as well. And then all the way to the left, um, you'll see two different types of sexual identities, there's claiming and reclaiming. So uh, claiming is those who have had 
the disability since birth and have been living with it their whole life and they're trying to claim their sexuality and then you have those who are reclaiming their sexuality which they've been normal but um, they suffered a disability and are attempting to reestablish themselves as a sexual being. So, like I said before, um, we live in a generation and a society that's very, very saturated uh, from a sexuality uh, standpoint, and we're constantly bombarded uh, about what the ideal kind of body image is, what makes you physically attractive, you know, young, fit, um, athletic. Yeah, there's a million different ways to describe um, what people are looking for and unfortunately those with disabilities really don't fall into what um, the standard norm is for our society and because of that they're not considered sexy um, and I, I had mentioned this before their disability really does become their ID and that's all they focus on and so one of the outlets that they turn to because of this is actually online dating and this is actually a pretty controversial topic when it comes to um, kind of sex and meeting up because as we all know, online you can catfish someone and they would never know. So people with disabilities have actually talked about you know, using this as kind of like a, a shield for someone to get to know them first and then they tell them about their disability. And there's been a lot of discussion about is that ethically okay, like should they be telling these people up front, um, you know, this is this is my condition, blah, 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 or do they wait and get to know them online and then when they meet them in person, that just happens to be um, a part of who they are. So that's a, that's a really major discussion that's going on right now. Um, and then from a sexual standpoint, the accessibility of information for those with disabilities is just very limited. Um, their social networks are limited. Um, and then their expectations of healthy development of sexuality are limited as well. And that comes from kind of like a multitude of things that we'll go into a little bit later. Um, but it's, 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 very, it's very difficult for them because of how people view them. And I've touched on that several times. Uh, college students are actually less uh, approving of sexual intercourse with those with learning disabilities. So um, in that age group, men will actually, with disabilities, will turn more to the internet and pornography to satisfy their sexual needs. And then um, those with uh, intellectual disabilities have more negative attitudes towards sexuality because of how they're being viewed by other um, others and so that makes it really hard for them 